President Trump just last year ordered decisive military strikes against the Assad regime for his prior use of chemical weapons, specifically nerve agents against Syrian civilians. That was last year in northern Syria. But it seems that the Assad regime was still able to produce and to continue to use these chemical weapons against civilians. So now the question is, will President Trump, if he does indeed order a military strike against Bashar al-Assad for this latest use of chemical weapons, against Syrians in the city of Douma, outside of the capital, Damascus, will it have much of an impact? Would it deter Bashar al-Assad from producing and to continue to use these chemical weapons against innocent civilians? And that's a major question on how expansive a military campaign, if it is ordered by President Trump, would indeed take place and how expansive it would be and how effective it would be in neutralizing the Assad regime's not only military and air force, but his chemical weapon production capability. We have to look at what's happening in the T-4 airbase. That's the Assad regime airbase in eastern Homs that's been used time and time again to launch these chemical attacks. That was the airbase that was the site of the recent Israeli Air Force strike. And it was, it's the airbase that's adjacent to the Shayrat military base that was struck by the American military last year. So we have to look at these sensitive military sites used by the Assad regime and whether or not the American strike this time around will be decisive and more impactful than it was last year. Forgetting what impact that that would have on the Assad regime, what impact would this have on U.S.-Russia relations, given the showdown that we saw at the United Nations Security Council? Well, we heard directly from the Russian ambassador to the U.N. that this attack does, did not happen. Uh, we also heard from the Russians that w this chemical attack was a supposed false flag by the Syrian rebels that were still holed up outside of Douma. So it's very clear that the Russians are siding by the Assad regime. That's uh, their, pa you know, they are the patrons of the Assad regime. The Assad regime depends upon the Russians. No regime aircraft can take to the skies without Russian knowledge. So it seems that the Russians are standing firmly behind Bashar al-Assad. And we heard some sharp words from the Russian ambassador uh, against any international uh, strike, military strike against the Assad regime, but it was also clear from the U.S. position, as we heard from Nikki Haley, the American ambassador to the United Nations, that regardless of what the United Nations Security Council does and regardless of the Russian position, it really seems that President Trump is bent on taking some sort of action, a punitive action, against Bashar al-Assad and his chemical weapons program. But, Ube, how certain are we that Assad is behind this chemical attack? Well, we've seen from the first responders and from the White Helmets, the Syrian civil defense uh, volunteers on the ground, some very uh, some harrowing footage of children and women and, and civilians hunkering in their bunkers with foam coming out of their mouths. We've also seen some uh, detailed reports from international watchdogs of the symptoms and signs that seem to indicate that this was indeed a chemical attack possibly a mixture of both chlorine gas and a nerve agent. And the reason this, uh, we have such abundant evidence is because the Assad regime has, has, there's precedent for the Assad regime of using these chemical weapon attacks. So we have multiple instances in the past that we can use to compare what happened on the ground this time around. And it's even, we're even seeing some images of the gas canisters that were allegedly used by the Assad regime uh, in this chemical weapon strike. So the indicators here are really very strong and very convincing that the Assad regime was behind this chemical weapons attack. We, of course, the United Nations does not have the ability to send international inspectors on the ground to take soil samples because that uh, effort was vetoed by the Russians just this October. The uh, UN agency watchdog that's in charge for chemical weapons uh, destruction, the OPCW, its mandate was vetoed by the Russians just this fall. And that's why they're, they're not, they do not have the ability to independently verify the, the composition of the chemical weapons by sending inspectors on the ground in the site. But regardless, I don't think that President Trump is going to wait for a drawn out process. He believes that he has the intelligence, has the, that France and England believe that they have sufficient intelligence and information on the ground to uh, conclude that this, this, this was indeed an illegal chemical weapon attack conducted by the Assad regime and by the, specifically, the Assad regime's air force against Syrian civilians.